Aspen University CJ 110. My name is Andre Rosedale. I'm the instructor for this course and this is module 4 discussion question 2 which reads, as found in all recent FBI uniform crime reports, UCRs, urban inner city areas have the highest crime rates in the country. A greater number of police are assigned to these areas because of the crime rate. How might police avoid accusations of biased policing while still reducing crime? Look forward to your response, and don't forget your good APA reference, even if it's just the textbook. So, urban inner city areas have the highest crime rates in the United States. A greater number of law enforcement officers are assigned to these areas to, re to respond to the reported crimes, conduct crime suppression efforts, monitor traffic, and enforce state and local laws. And that comes from the textbook. Officers assigned to these high crime, er high crime areas are subjected to accusations of biased policing. What is racial profiling and what is biased policing? Racial profiling refers to police practices that disproportionately target racial minorities for investigation and, and enforcement. And that comes from study.com in 2018. Bias policing refers to police practices that intentionally use prejudiced judgment based on race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, economic status, religious beliefs, or age. Generally speaking, bias-based policing includes racial profiling and many other types of profiling. And that comes from the same website, study.com, uh, published in 2018. Why does racial profiling and bias policing happen? These are types of incidents, these types of incidents occur for several reasons. The first, because a small number of police officers misuse their positions of trust in the community with negative contact with the people the officers are sworn to protect and serve. This may be based on the, an officer's personal views of someone's race, creed, color, or sexual orientation. The second reason is because many members of any given subculture may believe they are being targeted by the police due to the race, creed, or sexual orientation of that person, of these persons, being served by the police. The third reason is because filing complaints of racial profiling or bias policing can be used as a defense for a crime to create doubt on the ability of the community's law enforcement agency or to interfere, interfere with daily operations of a police department. This may include filing a complaint and attempts to get out of a traffic ticket, to have it taken back by the, the head of the law enforcement agency, to get charges dropped, or just in retribution for police activity. Can municipalities solve these problems by just assigning officers who match the demographics of the people they serve? No, as I discussed in the last video for module one or I'm sorry, module four discussion question one. It is almost impossible to find viable police candidates to match the demographics of any major metropolitan area. To break down the facts of this question, I have found some data on the demographics of police officers nationwide. And in my example, in St. Louis, Missouri, which was rated the most dangerous city to live in in 2015. High crime rates in areas with high levels of poverty. The population of these inner cities are predominantly minorities, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, and others. 70 point, I'm sorry, 78.7% 7, of the police officers in the United States are white, 86.2% are male, and the average age is 39.6 years old. And that comes from Data USA in 2015. In St. Louis, Missouri, in 2015, violent crimes per 100,000 people was 1,817.1. Murders were 188. The, the poverty level was 28.8% of the population, and unemployment was at 6.1%. Of the 300 thousand of the 315,685 people in St. Louis, Missouri, 49% were black, 43.8% were white, and 3.88% were Hispanic. And that came from the U.S. Census Bureau in 2016. The St. Louis, Missouri Police Department is made up of 63% white officers, 35% black officers, and 2% of officers who report other racial backgrounds. With these numbers, we can see St. Louis, Missouri is a poor inner city community made up of predominantly minorities. 
The police department, on the other hand, has a large contingent of white officers. The makeup of the residents is based on socioeconomic issues, while the police department's ranks are made up of candidates who applied to the department, passed background investigations, passed standardized police academy, a standardized police academy, successfully completed a field training, and are reliable employees based on the standards set by the department. Police administrators cannot assign officers to match the demographics of their residents if the candidates do not match the demographics. One cannot force someone to take a job just because their race, creed, or sexual orientation would be helpful to the police department's mission. My jurisdiction is unique to New England because we border two Indian reservations that both have casinos. These casinos attract migrant workers who are Asian and South and Central American. To add to the unique demographics, there is a large Haitian population in my city brought here by a philanthropist who worked with the Catholic nun, Mother Teresa. There have never been any Asian or Haitian officers in my department, and of the six Hispanic officers, only three speak Spanish. My agency struggles to recruit enough officers just to keep the ranks filled, and minority officers are impossible to recruit. Will training assist in helping officers avoid complaints of racial profiling and bias policing? Possibly, but there is already a standard training on these subjects in police academies and recertification training. In my opinion, racial and biased opin opinions are a disease. Training is not the cure. What is the correct way to address both valid and false complaints of racial and biased policing? In my experience as a veteran officer and one who has studied his trade on the academic level, I believe that video auto and audio surveillance is the answer. Body cameras, in-car cameras, and full-length videos from, from the general public are great tools in reducing poor police behavior, addressing problems that exist with the officers, and refuting false complaints. My opinion is not necessarily popular with officers I work with. However, when my agency had in-car cameras, they're gone now, the footage got me out of trouble from a false complaint multiple times. But if cameras are the easy fix, why don't we see them everywhere? There are several reasons for lack of cameras. Police officers don't like Big Brother looking over their shoulder. Some police unions take up the fight not to have a change in working conditions and force officers to wear com to, and that force officers to wear cameras. Activist groups have rejected police cameras, cameras when the footage shows the suspects in the wrong. The biggest barrier for in-car and body cameras comes down to money. Body cameras are, inex are inexpensive. Because my department does not issue, the, issue them, I have purchased one of my own off of Amazon and use a GoPro as an in-car camera. However, following the laws controlling the camera content is where police agencies feel the pinch. Data storage is expensive, and based on the type of incident an officer is investigating, files may be, may be required to be held for a certain amount of time to never be erased. An employee or employees must maintain the technology, answer to FOI requests, and make files accessible to officers, administrators, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and anyone that requests them through FOI. An employee for such a task usually means a new hire, which means a new salary, a benefits package, and a retirement of some sort. Everyone wants accountability until they see the price tag. What actions as a police administrator would you take to be able to assign the necessary amount of police officers to a high crime area while at the same time being, a, being able to address your complaints, to address complaints that your officers are racist because of their crime fighting techniques? I have a lot of links that I'm going to post in the um, in the description of this video, which is going to have um, a story about a professor that falsely claimed a trooper had racially profiled her in the state of Connecticut. Um, a second link is uh, a news story of Florida officers who tried to frame a woman for a crash that, that another officer was involved in, and that's where cameras were involved. And then my references for uh, this short lecture that runs almost 10 minutes. If you have any questions, please email me. I look forward to your response, and your initial response should have a good APA reference.